Good morning and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 6 Natural Sciences. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade 6 at worksheetcloud.com. Grade 6s, my name is Mrs. Hall and today I'm going to be teaching you about photosynthesis. The objectives of my lesson are the following. Why can a plant make its own food but an animal cannot? What is needed for photosynthesis to happen? How do plants make food and store food? Why do plants need so much water? And can plants live in the dark? Lastly, why are plants mostly green? Hopefully, by the end of this lesson today, you will have all of the answers. So let's start off with what a plant needs. A plant needs air, light from the sun, water, nutrients and warmth. Very important. Why does it need these things? If a seed is not warm enough, it will not germinate. And you learned all about that in grade 5 when you actually grew your own bean plants. Germination is when the seed starts to sprout into a plant. If a plant does not have enough light, it will grow to be tall and flimsy as it searches for the light and it will probably die. If a plant is not watered enough, its stem will be fragile and it will have very dry leaves and it will also eventually die. So, as you can see, water is very important, grade 6. What parts of a plant do? Let's start with the leaves. The leaves use a process called photosynthesis to produce food for the plant. They use light, water and carbon dioxide to do this. The stem transports the water and the nutrients to all the parts of the plant. And then the roots take up the water and the nutrients from the soil Okay, take a close look there. You can see the little root hairs. And they also keep the plant in the ground. So it serves like an anchor. It anchors the plant in the ground. Very important. As you know, plants need to get the fluids and nutrients from the ground up through their stems to the parts that are above ground level. There are several different modes of transportation. The one you're going to learn about today is through the xylem and phloem. Their main function is to keep all the cells of the plant hydrated and nourished. So remember, the mode of transportation for the water and the nutrients is through the xylem and phloem, which are the vascular tissues found in the plant. So let's recap. What does a plant need to grow? Can you remember? Think about it. Say it out loud. It needs sunlight. It needs air. It needs water. It needs nutrients. But now let's ask ourselves the question, how does the plant use these resources to grow? Let's take a close look at photosynthesis. So, Photosynthesis is when food provides a source of energy for living things. Okay, so we all know that that is what food does for us. It en enabling them to grow and survive. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants can make their own food, grade sixes. So food provides a source of energy for all living things, which enables them to grow and survive like us. And photosynthesis is the process by which plants can make their own food. Let's start with the leaves. Now the leaves on the plants and the trees are the food factories. The leaves are green because they contain chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green substance that plants use to capture light energy from the sun. Chlorophyll is very important in the process of photosynthesis. Without chlorophyll, plants cannot use the sunlight energy to make food. 
also the oxygen levels in the air will go down and if that happens plants and animals will suffocate so let's take a closer look at chlorophyll now and chloroplasts remember these terms chlorophyll is a chemical found in the chloroplasts of plants that allows the plant to absorb light chlorophyll is a green pigment found in almost all plants and algae so it gives the leaves their green color and chlorophyll is vital for photosynthesis, which allows plants to obtain energy from the light. Now let's take a close look at what chloroplasts are. Chloroplasts are unique structures found in plant cells that specialize in converting sunlight into energy that plants can use in the process of photosynthesis. Chloroplasts are considered organelles in plant cells, and organelles, grade sixes, are special structures in cells that perform specific functions. Okay, so if you want to pause me here and read through again to understand the difference between chlorophyll and chloroplasts. Now let's take a look at the stomato. So you know that the plant absorbs or takes in carbon dioxide from the air through little holes okay these little holes are found all over the plant mostly under the leaves and they are called the stomato these holes also leave uh, allow other gases and water to enter or leave the plant they do the same job as your mouth and your nose when you breathe the same job as the pores in your skin when you sweat okay so the stomata allow carbon dioxide in through the little holes found underneath the leaves stomata are tiny openings or pores in plant tissue that allow for gas exchange specialized cells known as guard cells surround the stomata and function to open and close stomatal pores Stomata allow a plant to take in carbon dioxide, which is needed for photosynthesis. Okay, very good scientific description there of what a stomata is. Let's take a look at carbon dioxide and water. So we know the plants take in carbon dioxide from the air. The carbon dioxide is combined with the water, H2O, using energy absorbed from the sun sunlight energy so carbon dioxide from animals and people breathing out plus water plus light and the chlorophyll in the leaves provide glucose and oxygen which is starch or food in the leaves of the plant so when the carbon dioxide and water is combined it creates a sugar called glucose okay right and that is the formula don't worry you don't need to know that yet so the glucose grade sixes is used for respiration or converted to a starch and stored in the leaves of the plant the glucose after the glucose is made the plant releases oxygen back into the air so it takes in carbon dioxide takes in water sunlight energy and releases oxygen and glucose okay plants are called producers because they are able to produce their own food now animals are not able to go through this process and are not able to produce their own food okay so plants are called autotrophs able to produce their own food and animals are called heterotrophs okay they rely on other organisms for food they are not able to make their own food plant respiration when we speak about it in scientific terms is the process of plants using up the sugars made through photosynthesis and turning them into energy for growth reproduction and other life processes okay so we are able to have life because of 
plant respiration. Okay, giving us the essential food and sugars we need. Let's take a look at the carbon dioxide oxygen cycle. So when you breathe in, you know you take in oxygen. When you breathe out, you release carbon dioxide. A plant takes in the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and then the plant releases the oxygen as waste. Okay, and allows us to breathe in oxygen. Let's revise and recap everything we've learned so far. So chlorophyll captures the sunlight energy. This energy splits the water into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is released into the air. The hydrogen is used with the carbon dioxide to make glucose or sugars. The sugars are moved from the leaves to other parts of the plant where they are stored. And the water in the plant's vein, sorry, the water in the plant veins carry the sugars. When the sugars reach the storage parts, they are changed into a starch. Okay. Plants can store the starch in the following places in their leaves, like cabbage leaves, spinach leaves, lettuce leaves, in their fruit, like apples, bananas, and peaches, in their stems, like a sugarcane stem, in seeds, like wheat or mealies. In flowers, like nasturtiums, broccoli and cauliflower, as well as in their roots, like carrots or beetroots. Let's revise again. Can you label the following parts? So, we know we need sunlight energy. What do you think this label is here? Look at your options. Sunlight, water, oxygen, carbon dioxide and glucose. Let's say we need sunlight. Okay. What else do we need? We need carbon dioxide. Okay, and we need water. Okay, over there, photosynthesis takes place in the green leaves, and we then have glucose and oxygen. Well done, grade sixes. So, let's see how much we can remember. So, the word photosynthesis is actually um, made up of two parts photo, meaning light. And synthesis is to make or put together. So it means to use light to make something. And in this case, it was making food. So let's take a look at question one. So we want to know what are the reactants in the photosynthesis equation? Okay, what do we need? to react in order for photosynthesis to take place? Is it glucose and oxygen? Is it carbon dioxide and glucose? Is it carbon dioxide and water? Or is it oxygen and water? What are the reactants in order for photosynthesis to take place? What would your top choice be? Let's go with, shout it out, C, carbon dioxide and water. Well done. The products of photosynthesis are, so what do we get from photosynthesis, grade sixes? Is it A, oxygen and glucose, B, carbon dioxide and water, C, oxygen and water, or D, carbon dioxide and glucose? It is oxygen and glucose, correct. Those are the products of photosynthesis. When does photosynthesis happen? At night, in the day and the night, weekly or in the day. Think about it. It needs sunlight energy. So what would be your best choice here? In the day. Photosynthesis takes place in the A, ribosomes, B, nucleus, C, chloroplasts, or D, the vacuole. Okay. What would be the most obvious answer there? What word or new term did you learn today that makes sense to you? Chloroplasts. Correct. Well done. The green pigment inside the chloroplast is called, think about it, we did the comparison, is it A, chlorophyll, B, chloroplasm, C, chloroform, or D, chlorine? What do you think it is? Chlorophyll. Well done. The holes in a leaf that allow diffusion of gas are called A, patata, B, passata, C, tomata, 
or D stomata. Okay, we learnt about these little holes. D stomata. The stomata are opened and closed by A protect cells, B guard cells, C keeping cells, or D the pleat cells. What's the correct answer? The guard cells. The network of cells that transport water and Food through the plant are called, remember we spoke about the vascular system. Okay, and we learn about it in a lot more detail, detail a little bit later on as you get older. Okay, is it A, the phloem and pylon, B, xylem and phloem, C, xylem and phloem, or D, phylum and zoom. Okay, science is hard. Remember, technology, I mean, terminology is difficult and it's hard to remember all the correct terms and definitions. But we remember xylem and phloem. Well done. Carbon dioxide moves into the leaves by A, effusion, B, confusion, C, infusion, or D, diffusion. The correct way to say that carbon dioxide moves or the gas moves is through diffusion. Well done. Water is absorbed into the plant from the soil by A, the shoots, B, the root hair cells, the leaf cells or D the stem. It has to go up through the roots and I pointed out the little root hair cells to you right at the beginning. So let's go with B. The green pigment found in plants is it chloroplasts, chlorophyll, cellulose or cytoplasm. The green pigment would be chlorophyll. Well done. The correct equation for photosynthesis is Glucose plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide and water. Glucose gives you lactic acid. Glucose plus carbon dioxide gives you oxygen and water. Or, or is it carbon dioxide plus water gives you glucose and oxygen? Quite easily, number D. Correct equation, carbon dioxide plus water gives you glucose and oxygen. And what type of energy is required to activate photosynthesis? Grade sixes, kinetic energy, thermal energy, light energy, or potential? Obviously, light. The leaf has a broad surface because it has to have space for insects to land. It can absorb lots of oxygen. It has a large surface area to absorb the light. Or it enables the plant to control its temperature. What do you think the correct answer is? I would go with it. It has a large surface to absorb the light. Great sixes, thank you so much for watching this lesson today. I hope you learned something new and just remember um, this is a stepping stone for photosynthesis and you do get to learn about it in a lot more detail as you get a little bit older. You would have learned quite a bit in grade 5, grade 6 was a consolidation with a little bit of extra knowledge and then you go into a lot more detail with vascular tissues and the transport through the stem um, when you get a little bit older. So thank you for watching grade 6s. Take care and have a good day.